What's going on YouTube? JT is reborn here and welcome back to another edition of my DC Comic Book Reviews. And in this video, I'm going to be talking about Batman vs. Robin, issue number two. This one is written, of course, by Mark Wade. This picks up right after the events of the previous issue. So I had kind of mixed responses to issue one of Batman vs. Robin. I didn't think it was up to par with what Mark Wade was doing in World's Finest. And plus, going from Robin and then seeing evil Damien, which we know he's possessed, and they even showcase that in this issue it just felt a little off-putting it's like oh wait a new writer comes in and guess what he's back to being evil again and all that other stuff and i don't know uh it just wasn't really like clicking with me so much but even then i think i said that maybe it'll get better retroactively after reading the second issue and i do i will say that the second issue is better than the first issue it, it's kind of a lot of exposition and kind of recapping things that have sort of taken place within the dc universe and then kind of getting more insight into what's going on with neza and what he's doing uh we see various magical characters across the dc universe like good and bad all under contr the control of the devil neza uh meanwhile batman was the only person who seemingly didn't get possessed it feels like uh but like a lot of the villains are they're just kind of like extracting various magical objects and they're being taken to uh the devil neza and his thing uh this one of course written by mark wade and mamad As asrar is the artist on this one um but yeah so we got damien there and then you have neza and then we have black alice with her ability she's kind of draining different things of their magical properties and transferring them into something else she's even getting kind of tortured in this thing and even damien despite being under the possession can't really like stomach watching the torturing so there are hints that he's still in there and then maybe this will be his means of breaking out of neza's control but he is kind of one of the big showcasing here like he has supposedly the most important role to play in this whole thing make your grand grandmother proud so ever since he's been controlled by neza so i like i said i'm curious to know why he of all things was chosen and also given that this is after the events of robin we we still don't showcase why damien's heart was needed for this whole thing maybe they're going to showcase that but he's kind of given some sort of magical object and key which i don't recall him really having when he was searching in the other issues maybe that was something kind of retroactively added in but uh, batman and alfred at least uh we're assuming this is alfred based on the ending of this issue it's either it is him or he's like a demon or something now and why is he following him i don't exactly know but I'm sure we'll get answers soon enough. If you think it's going one way, then it takes you to a different direction. But basically, they're here at, I it was at the House of Mystery or whatever. And this is where they're kind of getting clues and such as to what's going on. Uh, and this is one of the best, this is probably the strongest aspect of the issue is the creative way uh, information is told to the reader. And that's where they're kind of like getting flashbacks sort of that for events that they weren't necessarily there for that they're kind of seeing from a different perspective. Batman thinks he's going to help. He sees some sort of demon. He He's actually uh, discovering Mother Soul is for the first time because Damien never told him about it. But he's like, there's something kind of familiar about this environment. And eventually he comes to conclusion like oh wait this is lazarus so this place right here this is where neza's tomb was i'd been here years and years ago so yeah so he's finding things out and he comes to find out that neza has taken possession of him and there's some creative visuals in that too we get more of the history of the lazarus resin they talk about the lazarus demon and such and basically how it was refined from a chinese elixir of resurrection Im immortality millennia ago from the blood and tears of a grieving father which if you read world's finest so that's where the lazarus resin comes from i'm not sure if there's any other real explanations for it but basically just this elixir right here so yeah um the lazarus demon and there's like this weird key coming on here which damien somehow just kind of had uh the whole time i guess i don't know did he really have this thing before uh wh what's the deal with his heart and all that is that ever going to play a factor or is it just going to kind of get ignored i feel like they, they got to acknowledge why the heart was necessary before but uh anyways so Batman's confronted various dreams and illusion states, and Damien comes to a end right there, and then Batman realizes, like, wait a minute, I remember this thing, this is where we had the prisoner, don't open it, and then we see Neza coming in, and that's basically him, he immediately possesses him, and he couldn't think of any other way to get better revenge than to utilize uh, the son of the person who jailed him as his means for revenge. And then Damien kind of shows up, they get into a little bit of a scuffle. There's some creative visuals too, with the whole puppetry and stuff, I think that was kind of the coolest part of the issue. And then Damien gets the 666 Batman suits, 
by Mother Soul. So uh, yet another way he gets the 666 suit. He's gotten the 666 suit in so many different ways at this point. It's kind of like hilarious. There is no one defining origin. It's like, oh, well, here's the 666 suit, Damien. Oh, you get this one here and get this one here. And then it comes out that uh, the other Batman family members are also in control. So Tim, uh, Dick, uh, Jason and Steph. So pretty much everybody was possessed without Batman even really realizing it. So that's that's kind of interesting. And then the the ending of the issue is Batman and Alfred are like, all right, I got you by my side. I work best when I'm with you, Alfred. But there's something mysterious going on here. Uh, Alfred is either possessed by Nez. Like, what is the deal with Alfred though? That's what I really want to know. It's kind of left ambiguous, but I'm sure we're gonna find out the full details of what's coming on in uh, subsequent issues. But overall consensus, I thought the artwork was pretty good uh for the most part and this was a better issue because it got we got a lot more context as to what's going on and it does move at a pretty quick pace that's one thing i do appreciate about the two issues so far is despite it being 48 pages it moves at a quick pace but it doesn't feel like you're really kind of being undercut um with the length of the issues like they're they're, sh they're they're longer issues but it doesn't feel like it's really necessarily dragging um so so there's that um, I'm trying to think of what else to really say about it. Uh, I, I like how, it, like, it, there was a lot of exposition in this issue, but I feel like it was kind of necessary to get some context as to what happened. There's a bit of recapping uh, of stuff in case you've read Robin or didn't really get the chance to. And it's moving the story forward, and then there's hints that maybe he's not fully evil and possessed or something. I don't exactly know, but yeah, we're, we're finding out more information about Neza and his stuff, and hopefully it picks up the pace a little bit more in the next issue. We only have a few issues left of this thing. I think it goes to issue five, and I've heard in issue four, uh, based on that issue, it's spinning out of the events of that one, that we're going to get the whole Lazarus Planet storyline, or however that's going to work. I don't know how he's going to break free of this possession. What's the deal with Alfred? There's a lot of questions raised in this one, but there is a lot of fun to be had in certain aspects, especially the whole playing around with the magical aspects of the DC universe and the way it's kind of like orchestrating a means to get some sort of exposition to Batman in that. I thought that was done creatively, visually. So at least that was done in a more interesting fashion than someone would be like, hey, Batman, this is what happened, blah, 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 blah. Here it's done with using the magical aspects and getting the audience or the information necessary for what's going on here in a creative way. And I thought that was the strongest aspect of the issue in particular. So yeah, still tired of the Bruce first Damien thing, even though he is possessed and Batman realizes that he's got to try and stop him and find a means to do so. But I think you, with uh, this Black Alice character stealing the magical energy from different uh, objects and putting it into the Helmet of Fate, I think that's how Batman's going to ultimately try and stop Neza, is he's going to put on the Helmet of Fate, and then he's going to be able to utilize all that to take down Neza for good. So hopefully that kind of happens, and I guess you get some background on the Lazarus resin and stuff. Was Neza the Lazarus demon? I don't know, that was, that was kind of a little bit confusing to me. I guess not. I guess that's something else, but... Yeah, uh, still no information about why Damien's heart was necessary, but hopefully we'll get that information soon, because it feels like he's given some sort of key, but we're, we're never really, like, showcased why his heart was important in the first place if you read Robin, so I don't know. But uh, I liked it more than the first issue. Still not in love with this series, but it is better than the first one, so there's that. All right, well, if anybody has any thoughts on it, uh, let me know in the comment section down below. Be sure to like this video, share it with your friends, subscribe to the YouTube channel for more content, hit the bell for notifications, all that other fun stuff. And uh, yeah, that's going to wrap it up for right now. I will see you all next time. As always, take care now. Bye-bye then. I'll see you all in the next video, which will be Batgirls or one of the Dark Crisis things. And then I also have, was it Batman Incorporated? And then there's Batman Urban Legends. And then there's DC Tales of Terrors or whatever. There's going to be a lot of videos today. Uh, so I'll probably get a few out early in the morning, which you'll see this one up first, and then I'll move on to some of the other ones later on in the day, and hopefully I'll be all set by uh, by tomorrow, So, because we got other comics to talk about tomorrow, so there's that. All right, bye-bye.